Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm just doing a quick video on Orca Slicer, the latest release candidate is out. And so I thought we'd take a look at it. There's a couple small changes that are worth reviewing. So let's go ahead and get started. So I need to be honest, I haven't been posting quite as much lately. I've had some computer issues and system issues and then just about everything else. So I'm finally back with a new laptop. So hopefully I can start recording again regularly. I'm also going to try to post consistently on Sundays. So if anybody has any questions or would like to see me post some content, just let me know. And then I'll try to watch that on a Sunday. Additionally, I've also enabled memberships for the channel. So if you want to support my work, now I use all proceeds, get plowed right into buying new equipment, buying things to test and display and demos and whatnot. So I look forward to bringing you more content in the future. If you're interested in supporting me, feel free to join the membership. So let's go ahead and take a look at Orca Slicer and the latest release candidate. So to access this, you're going to start by searching for Orca Slicer, and then you're looking for the Orca Slicer GitHub page. So once you get to the GitHub page, it's not real obvious just looking at the page where the release candidates are. But if you go over on the right hand side to releases, the very top is the latest release candidate. Now I've done a previous video, if I scroll down covering the beta and all the awesome features in there. In the case of the release candidate, there's a couple changes. There's some major bug fixes, including those with the wipe tower and fuzzy skin. And then there's a new quality of life feature where it shows the extruder settings within the filament. And that's, that to me actually is excellent because that's been a bit of a problem for me where I have to keep going back and forth in between tabs to take a look at and figure out where things are at. Now, the other change here, which I thought was pretty interesting, is you can do some design work within Prusa Slicer. That design work is stuff like creating simple objects, embossing objects, and you can see in the screenshots here some examples. And one of the issues, apparently, and I hadn't seen this mainly because I don't use Prusa Slicer for design work, is the fact that when you exported out a model with a negative space, basically a model with a void, it exported it out as a solid object. So if we look at the embossed writing that's indented into the cube, when it's imported into Orca Slicer, it's no longer there. Same with this cylinder. This is supposed to be a hole in the top of this cube. And again, when they import it into Orca Slicer, it's no longer there. But with the new change, you'll notice that when you do the import into Orca Slicer, now those voids are there. Now I should point out that the shape here in Orca Slicer has several different shapes. It's this cylinder, the one, two, three. So basically that's three shapes. But when it's imported into Orc Slicer, it actually merges all that together and takes out those voids. So it basically hollows out the cube. So it's something to take note of. Now there's some other miscellaneous changes here. Nothing that really jumped out at me as something that made a huge difference. There's some new uh, profiles that are fixing to be added. You'll notice there's a mention of the K2. I should mention that I did, in fact, pre-order a K2, and I'm waiting anxiously for that to arrive. Uh, hopefully that'll happen sometime in the next couple of weeks. And once it does, I'll do an unboxing and a review here on the channel. So with all this being said, 
what I've done is I've gone down here to the assets. And in my case, I'm running the Mac. I downloaded the latest release candidate, renamed it. And then if we look at my applications, I scroll down here. You'll notice I have Orca Slicer and then Orca Slicer underscore release candidate. So what I've done is I have the stable release here as Orca Slicer and then the release candidate. That way I could switch back and forth between the two. Now, in my experience, at least on a Mac, these are both pulling from the same set of profiles. So that way I don't have to worry about recreating profiles or moving them around. Now, before I open up Orca Slicer, I guess there's something else I should show here. And what that is, is the issues section in GitHub. If you're using the latest release candidate, it is critical that you help the developers by posting if you have any issues. You'll notice here that somebody has created a bug report for the K1 printer. And let's just click on that and look at it. So the person that posted this actually did a really good job. They posted what the issue is. And they posted that they've actually searched existing issues to make sure it's not there. They've posted the version, the operating system they're using, and then the steps they used to create the error so somebody could reproduce it. And then they have what the expected results are, as well as a log. So what's critical is if you're testing the release candidate, try to put this information together and post this into your issue. So that way, again, the developers can try to address that. The whole point of the release candidate is to get the community to test and it should be knows that these developers are doing an awesome job. And it's just critical that if we are testing Orca Slicer and testing the release candidate or the betas for that matter, that we give feedback and identify any issues that might be there. So I'll get off my soapbox and let's go back over to the release candidate. So I've opened the release candidate. What I'm going to do is just let me load a simple model here and easiest thing to do is I've got some calibration models that I keep. So I have my calibration models. Let me just drag in and drop in a Banshee. So I put in a Banshee and let's just arrange that. Okay, so I have opened up Work Slicer and I just want to take a quick look. Let me switch which profile I'm looking at and I'll go to my Ender 3S1. I just posted the video about creating this profile. And then let's take a look at the printer here. And we're going to take a look at the various settings I have. And let's look under extruder, nozzle size. I have the retraction length here as 0.8. Probably can move that down. Let's just change that to, or leave that as is. I'll leave that at 0.8. And then if I look over here under filament, I click on the filament tab. You'll notice I have the settings override. The settings override in previous versions just had NA here on the length. It didn't have anything, so I couldn't tell what it was. So I had to go back and forth between the printer settings in here to make sure I knew what the value was and then to update it. So although this is a small change to me, this is a really important change. And it really makes my life easier because I can look down here and see what the settings I have over on the printer. So if I want to override these, I can. But why would I want to override them? Well, maybe the retraction on TPU needs to be different than what I have for PLA. So instead of having a set retraction for every filament, I have the ability to override these. Again, okay, these are just it's a simple change, but it makes my life easier. Now, the other changes had to do with Prusa Slicer exports. I don't use that feature, so I'm not going to review it. But this 
Again, it's a really nice change. I'm really looking forward to Work Slicer 2.2. And remember, if you're interested in what's in the original beta, you can check out my video that I'll link above. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description of how you can schedule a 15 minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm going to use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.